Welcome to one of the most listened to music news podcasts in the world, SGNP, with your host, Darren Sutherland. Join us as we talk with industry leaders, artists, and entertainers about their faith, family, and careers. This is information you will not find anywhere else on radio, web, or in a magazine, but only firsthand on SGNP. Sun beating down, never been hotter. She headed to the well to draw a little water when she met a man who asked her for a drink. Next thing you know, the two got to talking about what was missing in the bucket she was drawing. And what he said changed everything. And now the story's going round. She told everyone in town, come to the well of living water. Six souls. And now my heart is great joy in knowing a spring is rising up and overflowing. And I'm telling everybody everywhere I go. Down to the well of living water. Welcome to the most listened to Southern Gospel Podcast in all the world. And people say, how do you know that? Well, numbers don't lie. Different from radio. On a podcast, you can tell how many people downloaded it. And thank you for the thousands that downloaded last week's show with Mark Trammell. What a great show. And if you hadn't had an opportunity to listen to it, Mark tells us things that he's never told anybody else, never told the singing news, never told anybody anybody from stage or anywhere else and uh my co-host arthur rice is here arthur what about last week i mean wow it was it was incredible it really wasn't you know i've had more comments about that program probably than anything we've ever done uh from people and uh it was great it was great and you know what the great thing about that show was just just his you know let's face it you know, we bring some artists on here. They know of me. They don't know me. They know you, but they know you sometimes in passing because you're the president of the SGMA, and you're also the lead singer of the Kingdom Marriage. You've been in this business your whole life, so they know Arthur Rice, but maybe they don't know Arthur the person, okay? And yeah. they know the podcast because in the industry, we're just people know that, hey, Darren and Arthur do a podcast, and 
You know, who knows what they're going to ask and who knows what they're going to say because we don't script anything we do. I mean, have I ever right. sent you, I mean, in the two and a half years we've no. been doing this now, have I ever once sent you an <laughs> outline saying, Arthur, this is what we're going to do? Well, uh, I think when I first started, uh, you sent me one, and we didn't get anywhere close to any, <laughs> any of the script, <laughs> and so we never did it again. But but you know what the the thing about it is, and I think that's what makes podcast just good. And and you know sometimes you and I have been guilty of just trying to, of not being ourselves and trying to be so professional that we lose sight of reality. And you know the Mark Trammell interview was just so real. I mean let, let's just yeah. face it; yeah. it was just like yeah. we're sitting there on the front porch talking and. You know what? That's what I want us to be from now on. You know, yeah. If we, oh, yeah, absolutely. If we talk about the blessings of the Lord, let's talk about the blessings of the Lord. If we talk about gospel music, let's talk about gospel music. You know, let's just keep it real. Let's just keep it. You know, yeah. We, we live in a world where that's what people want. You know what I'm saying? And, oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. and and I'll say this for these millennials and Generation Z folks that old guys like me and you get mad at, okay, and say, "Man, they don't do this. They don't do this." They are part of the society that has pushed us and gotten things out in front of the curtains instead of from behind it. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. But, boy, last week, Mark Trammell, oh, if you hadn't heard that interview with Mark Trammell, Trammell goes into the part from from, go, Le- from go Le- back and listen to it. Yeah, from, from leaving the Kingsman and how that happened to leaving the cathedrals to leaving Greater Vision to leaving Gold City and how the Lord's watched over him during this COVID. And he wasn't even trying to preach either. You know what I'm saying? No, no. Well, and, and, you know, and that, that's 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 what it is. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're, we're supposed to share what the Lord does in our lives, and that's what uh, that's what we're supposed to do. And uh, that our life should preach itself. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yep, it should. Well, coming up today, we got one of your buddies. You work with him every single day. He either yep. makes you sound good or he makes you sound bad. <laughs> you ever thought of it that way? <laughs> yeah. You know, actually, he's my designated singer, too. He is? What, yeah. What, 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 what parts he sing? All four? You know, you, you know what a designated singer is. That's, 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 yeah. that's, what, I, well, that's what I was to handle. You know, anytime he pointed at me, I sang for him. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what, that's what Andy is whenever I point at him. He sings for me. <laughs> but he can sing, he can sing, you know, leader baritone, and not only you know great piano player, but but uh, he does a great job singing. Solid. Uh, hey, I got to ask you a question about a picture I saw yeah. on Facebook this week, and I, I guarantee you, other people have asked you a question. Okay. <laughs> well, and you you know I, where I I'm about to go, to don't you? you? I do, and you know I was going to tell this story. Yeah. Of what happened. And what 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 happened? Well, let, let's do this. You know, let's do this before okay. we go on. To, before you tell the story, let's take okay. a break. Let's come back and in, interview Andy. Then we'll tell that story at the end of the podcast today. Oh, that'd be good. In, in that way, you know, we it's build worth, up. It's worth sticking around for. Yeah, <laughs> folks. When you see this picture, and we'll post the picture on SGNP this week on Southern Gospel News Podcast, Facebook site, and on Twitter. We'll post that picture. But when you hear this story, it's going to be worth it, okay? It's yes. going to be worth yes. it. And, you know, Arthur, we, we crossed uh, – I don't even want to talk about numbers and milestones, but we crossed another milestone as far as listeners go. And thank you for everyone that tunes in. Some folks listen to every show. Some folks listen to every other show. You can always go to our website, www. Southern Gospel News Podcast, real easy, Southern Gospel News Podcast dot com, and you can pick out any one of a hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty interviews. You know, I counted this the other day, and it's not because I didn't have nothing else to do, but I just counted it. We've got close to ninety something hours in tape, Arthur, of us talking to different artists. 
of all genres. Wow. And uh, that's two and a half weeks worth of work. Did you realize we had done that much to this? Oh, no. And and all really either didn't. one all either one of us has gotten out of it is a pillow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice pillow. It's a nice pillow. And yeah. you know, they weren't even supposed to send you no pillows. They were supposed to send you what, a comforter or something? I forget what it was. Some sheets. Some sheets. They sent me some sheets. Did yep. they ever send yep. you the sheets? And I got the sheets and all the pillows. You got the sheets. <laughs> Yeah. So thank it's you. For, everything to me. Yeah, thank you for our friends at My Pillow. And you know what? I, I yeah. will. I will say this about My Pillow. Mike Lindell and the folks at My Pillow. The reason I don't mind that just getting the, the pillows is because Mike's heart is where mine and your heart is. If you listen to him, if you have seen him on TV in front of our president, you know where Mike stood. And. uh when Mike spoke at the White House not too long ago, he talked about family. And uh, yeah. you and I know that's a big part of gospel music is family. Yeah. So it is yeah. what it is. Hey, got some big guests coming up in, in a few weeks. I don't want to name them today because every time I name them, we're going to get them. They say, yeah, we're coming on, then they don't come on. I'm going to just start calling out names of people who tell me that, and then they don't come on. What do you think? You think we ought to do that, Arthur? <laughs> maybe while well, they're not coming on. <laughs> then, they, then, then maybe they will come on because, you know, I got to tell you this story real quick. And remember, folks, listen later in the day today when we talk to Arthur about this picture you've got him up. So I got to tell you this story. This is, gosh, it's 20 years ago now. I'm on the radio in Atlanta, Georgia, WGKA. I do the afternoon show. Daniel Britt, who does the show up at uh, Winston-Salem that everybody loves, does the show after me. But in the afternoons, we took phone calls. We took asked questions. We would bring artists in, have fun, have a good time with it, blah, 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 blah. Well, on a Wednesday afternoon, Tony Green had promised to be live in studio at 1 o'clock. Okay, Arthur? Mm-hmm. Well, about 1.30, Tony still ain't showed up. So about 1.45, I'd already announced he was coming today at 1 o'clock. So I just said, well, Tony Green ain't coming in today, folks. I don't know where he's at. He didn't call me, nothing else. Didn't say anything. He didn't tell me he wasn't coming, and I've announced it. So I'm not going to look like the bad guy. When y'all see Tony, y'all tell him he didn't show up for Darren's show, blah, 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 blah. Guess who comes running in there in a pair of flip-flops with a wet head about 2.15 that afternoon? (laughs) <laughs> Green, <laughs> <laughs> the late Tony Green. We had a good time. We talked funeral homes yeah. for forty-five minutes, so it was fun. It, <laughs> it was fun. Hey, we'll be back right back with one of Arthur's buddies, the pianist for the Kingdom Airs, Andy Stringfield, on SGNP. Hey, this is Darren, and I'm here for my buddy Mike Lindell. In my pillow. That's right, my pillow. I got to tell you a little secret. And this is a true story. The other day I'm laying in the bed. I looked at Mary and I said, I'm going to get me some new pillows today. She said, What do you need with new pillows? You got them. I said, I got one that's decent. And I didn't know which one it was. I mean, I knew which one it was. And I pulled the cover off of it. And it was my only my pillow. The rest of them were these ones that we bought from TJ Maxx or Target or Walmart or somewhere that. Just had worn out their welcome, and you know what, guys? I feel like I needed new pillows. And she said, well, why don't you call my pillow because you like the one you got there and tell them what you're looking for, and they'll help you out. You know what I called, and guess what? They helped me out. They asked me what size I was. They asked me how I slept. Did I sleep on my back or on my side or on my stomach, what felt right, feathers or, you know, blah, 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 foam. They asked me all these questions. More questions than I ever dreamed about a pillow. And I got my new my pillow in the mail and I've slept right. You want that ch- change in your life? It's real simple. 1-800-338-2330. 1-800-338-2330. Use the code word SGNP. That's right, the code word SGNP. 
and tell them you heard about this special offer. And when you use that code, you'll get a great discount from the folks at MyPillow. I use MyPillow. You should too. 1-800-338-2330. Use the code SGNP. MyPillow, the official pillow and sleep provider of Southern Gospel News Podcast. Hey, folks, you're listening to Southern Gospel News Podcast. That's right, SGNP. My buddy Darren Sutherland and Arthur Rice, they are knocking it out of the park. Listen, check them out. Continue to listen, but be sure to check out Southern Gospel Point of View on iTunes, Spotify, or Google Play. And welcome back to SGNP, Darren Sutherland, my co-host from up there in Sevierville, Tennessee, Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg, wherever you want to say he's at. He's right in the foothills of the Smoky Mountains on the other side of his old home place in North Carolina, Arthur Rice. Arthur, I'm going to let you do the introductions here today because we got one of your co-workers here and... uh, yeah. He, he makes you, it's like I said in our introduction, he either makes you sound good or he makes you sound bad. And as good as you're, uh, and as good as the Kingdom Air sound as of late, he's making you sound awful good. So, anyway. He is. He is. That's for sure. The great Andy Stringfield is with us today, and we're glad to have you. Andy, thank you for coming on. Well, thank you. I don't know about the great part, but I do appreciate that, buddy. <laughs> well, I do, because I get to be here with you It's good day. to be here. Well, thank you, man. Andy, Andy where at in Tennessee are you? Where, where, do you, where do you live? I mean, we're not going to come to your house and ask for dinner or anything like that. And we heard a big old dog well, in the background. So if any fan shows up, you know, we know most gospel music fans can't run fast anyway. So, you know, we know you'll run them off. So with that dog. but <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I actually had to move to the front porch, um, but I, I'm in Pigeon Forge. I'm just about, gosh, I guess about five, ten minutes from Dollywood. I don't live too far from Arthur, about 15 minutes from Arthur, I guess. Nice. Right, just right off the parkway in yep. Pigeon Forge. All right, Andy, I'm going to ask you a question then before we even get started. Okay. Where do the locals go eat in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee? Go eat? Yep. When you go out, when you say, when it's a random Thursday night and your wife looks at you and she says, Andy, let's go out to eat. Okay. You ain't running down to the apple barn. Okay. We know that. All right. You you ain't running over to the farmer's table or any place like that because that's a tourist trap. Okay. Where does, where does Andy and his wife go eat? <laughs> ruin you know, it for the locals. We, <laughs> yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ruin it for everybody else. Um, there's a, there's a, a burger, burger and wing place called the Blue Moose. Okay. In Pigeon Forge. That's one of my absolute favorites and has been for, I, I guess, 12, 13 years since I've been up here. Nice. And, uh, been up it, here. It's called it's called on. It, it's it's like second on uh, TripAdvisor when you Google where to eat in Pigeon Forge. So it's it's kind of called on. It's not a, not a secret anymore, but I'd have to say the Blue Moose, burgers and wings. Well, you know, every time I asked Arthur that question, you know what he says. He's such a diesel sniffer. He always says Tony Gore's. So I mean, you know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Tony's is good too. I can't afford to eat at Tony's. I understand. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, tell us about Andy Springfield. Tell, tell us, tell Andy, where, what got you in to gospel music? I mean, you know, we're either born into it, we fall into it, or we just find it, and next thing you know, we're stuck in it. And I don't mean stuck in a bad way, because once you fall in love with it, you're in love with it. I mean, it never leaves you. Right. So, so tell no, us. absolutely not. I guess it, it kind of found me. Um, I started playing piano by ear when I was five years old. And um, my grandmother played for church, and my mom played the organ. We had a really small church in Harriman, Tennessee, back in the country. And I started playing by ear. I would just I would hear something and run to my grandma's piano and pick it out. And we had a little local quartet in church, uh, and we'd sing out of the red back hymnal, but I didn't really know Southern gospel music. And I guess when I was seven or eight, uh, somebody, a good friend of my grandpa's, gave him a cassette of the Kingsman. It was uh, called Better in Person. Yeah. And I believe Arthur was on that album. That way. If I'm not mistaken. That ages you and a little bit, Arthur. Very... He's seven years old, and he's yeah. talking about oh, you I, on, a, oh, on I... a tape. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I know. And, and, the, 
the album came out the year I was born, by the way, but that's beside the point. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> it, it's, uh, <laughs> so my grandpa got that tape, and we were riding around, and he started playing that cassette tape in his car, and I just absolutely fell in love. I was hooked right off the bat. And I think the thing that jumped out to me was the tenor, was Gary Shepard. I wanted to be a tenor singer. That's the part I heard. That's the first part I heard was the tenor part. And I just forget about the piano. I wanted to be a tenor singer, but, you know, the piano stuff just kind of followed me around, and I had to had to stick with that, especially when my voice changed. Yeah. <laughs> and when did you realize, I mean, you know, you're five, six, seven years old. You're playing in a church. You're playing for a little group in a church. I mean, let's face it. It's an oddity for a crowd to see a five, six, seven-year-old kid playing a piano. Okay, and and it, it's a blessing, but quite frankly, if we're going to look at it in worldly terms, it's kind of entertaining to sit there and see a five, six, seven-year-old. And I imagine if you're up there playing the piano for a group, you're stealing their thunder a lot of times by people watching you opposed to watching the group. When did you look, figure out you was pretty good at this? And, uh, hey, the crowd seemed to like Andy Stringfield at seven years old playing a piano. Man, you know, it just... My mom and my grandma, they they said, we're going to get you some piano lessons. And so I started saying, I didn't really realize, because, you know, like I said, I wanted to be a singer. This piano playing thing just kind of happened. And I would sit and play, and I'd, I had my back to the congregation, and I'd always turn around to see if, if people were watching me. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I just And I couldn't really <laughs> understand why everybody was staring at me, because I thought, this is normal. I mean, this is just, this is just normal to me. I, so I don't know. It just kind of, it just kind of all happened. Did what was it an oddity? I mean, was you the only five, six, seven year old piano player you knew? I mean, did you have friends that was playing the piano, older, younger, anything like that? No, no, not really. Huh? Just just family. And uh, you see, I would go to school when I discovered the Kingsman and gospel music. I'd go, to, I'd go to school, and I'd ask my friends, "Hey, have you ever heard of the Kingsman? Have you ever heard of Gold City?" <laughs> so I, I was the odd one, especially in school, as far as. Uh, music that I listened to and, and the things that I was into and then and like to do and things like that. Cool. Cool. Arthur, what you got? You know, we, uh, here's something a lot of people don't know about Andy. Uh, when, when, when Andy came with our group, we, uh, uh, um, Adam Harmon had left and, and so we were looking for a piano player. Well, well, we, we thought about Andy because we had played with them. I think that winter or something or other anyways. And, and, so we remembered him, and so we tried to get him. Well, at the time, he was playing with the Stamps um, Quartet, and he had and, – and so we needed a piano player like yesterday. And so uh, we <laughs> talked to him and had him come over, and, and you know, we loved him, and, and we thought, okay, well, this would be great. But he had, he had just went with the Stamps, and he had promised to Ed uh, that he would stay with them um, through that year. And um, – and you know what? That was such a great impression on us that he was committed to that commitment uh, to stay there, not just jump ship and, and come with us. And we waited on him, actually. And uh, we waited for, what, eight months, nine months, something like that, I think, Andy? Yeah. Um, actually, the first time that the, the position was open for a few months before I was even really interested in it. Um, yeah. because they I, didn't pay enough. Is that what it was? Story, <laughs> no. <laughs> little backstory. I was, I am such a huge Elvis fan. Yeah. And a lot of people that know me know that. And when I was with the stand, you know, Eddie and it sang with Elvis yeah. and we got to, we got to go around and sing, we'd sing gospel music and open up for these Elvis tribute concerts. And it, and it was just like a dream for me. And I was young and single. I like being on the road. And uh, I was having a great time with these guys, and the King of Marriage job came open, and I thought to myself, man, I, I like being on the road. I've always wanted to be on a bus and sleep in a bunk and be gone from home. I, I don't know if I want to be in one place all the time. And so I actually kind of basically turned it down the first – this is back that winter. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, they um, – I got a couple fill-in guys that, you know, nobody permanently. And I, the longer this went on, we got on into the summer 
of that year. And I thought, you know, th- this is crazy to me. One of the best jobs in Southern gospel music is still open and available and right in my backyard. Yeah. And it just, I, I, I guess the Lord was just working on me. And um, I had been in contact with, with Steve French and I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to email him and ask if this job is still available. So one night, just out of nowhere, I sent Steve an email, and, and he had sent me one back right away with his phone number, and he said, call me. So we, we set up an audition, and, uh, man, it, it just all fell into place, and it was just it was just a God thing. You know, the timing uh, it didn't make sense to a lot of people. I mean, I had people tell me, you're crazy. You're crazy not taking this job, but I, I don't know. I, I guess it just it worked out like it was supposed to. You know, when, when I think about – and it, when I think about traveling on the road, and certainly the stamps amongst any group in America with Ed and those guys are road warriors. I mean, yeah, they they from Texas to mm-hmm. California to New York to Pennsylvania to Georgia, Florida. I mean, I don't think Ed was trained by JD, so he didn't turn nothing down. I'm sure. Okay, so you're right. living you're living right. the life. I mean, let's just face it, you're living the life of a truck driver, so to speak, point A to point B yeah. and, and, yeah. and, you know, taking bass in truck stop and, you know, stopping to eat at a rest area and whatever else, just to keep the thing going and keep it rocking and rolling. Now, all of a sudden you're traveling and now all of a sudden you're home all the time. What's the biggest thing you got to get used to? You know, I, I guess it's just, it, it's almost like, just a nine to five job, except I get to go in and I get to play and sing gospel music every day. Yeah. You know, we do two or three, sometimes four shows a day. And I I wake up in the morning, I get ready to go to work and I come home and it's like, this is unbelievable. I've got to get up, go into work and sing and play piano and come home to my wife and my son. And man, that, that is such a blessing. And as much as I loved the road, you know, back when I was young and single, and I, you know, I still like to get out there and see a different uh, kind of a change of scenery every now and then. And we get to do that in the winter and scratch the itch a little bit. But man, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like being able to be home every night, sleep in your own bed. And uh, man, we, we're just we're just so blessed. Arthur, I'm gonna put you on the spot. I don't ever do okay. this. Okay, Andy, I never okay. put him on the spot. Okay. Give me your funniest Andy Springfield story. Arthur, that you can oh, tell, man. that you can Uh-oh. tell, and then we're gonna get Andy's okay. comments on what's true okay. about that and what's not true about that. Okay, go this, ahead, Arthur. This is pretty funny. We we all went to lunch one day. One, one day we done, done one program and we went to lunch. Came back to do another program. Well, Andy was having some chest pains during the program. <laughs> And he was, boy, he was just hurting. And he was like, boy, he didn't, you know, he didn't know. And this was, this was shortly after, you know, Anthony uh, Berger, uh, Andy Ciro, had passed away and from, from a heart attack on stage. And so it was kind of fresh on his, on his mind, you know, and, and uh, boy, he, he was hurting. And, and he said, well, maybe this is, maybe this is it. This is, you know, time. And he said, well, Lord, if this is it, you know, uh, uh uh, it, it'll be there and beyond the gates. We don't ever do beyond the gates. I know that, that that's, that's no, well, about that time I turned around and I said, beyond the gates. And Andy, <laughs> Andy thought he was going, he was going, he's going to glory. right then. <laughs> I, of course, I turned, of course, I turned wide as a sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I looked around and looked at him and he looked odd. <laughs> and I thought, well, He's getting the blessed right here. <laughs> Come to find out it's just gas. But <laughs> yeah. I've been there. That, that's true. <laughs> yeah. And see, and here I was I was only like twenty four years old at the time. And you know, I, I never had any chest pains and I didn't know what so what the world was going on with me. And then your mind gets to racing and I have anxiety and, and my mind races and, and I thought, My goodness, I'm about to die right here on stage at Dolly. <laughs> And then I got thinking, what would be a good song? To, what would be a good song to go out on? Beyond the gates, so, man, that'd be perfect. But man, we we haven't done that song in years. We're not going to do that song. The next song, let's do Beyond the Gates, boys. 
that is absolutely true. See, that's why I that's why I know God's got a sense of humor. Okay. Because he was yeah, messing with you a little bit, and he put that beyond the gates in your mind, okay? And then he looked over and said, you know what? I'm going to just trigger Arthur a little bit and let him call beyond the gates, and I'm going to watch Andy's reaction to this to see if he really realizes who's in control of this whole situation. <laughs> Uh, it's funny. And it's funny. we didn't find out about it until after, afterwards, but boy, it was funny. <laughs> Neat. Yep. Neat. What's the difference I, between, you know, Andy, what's the difference between living with guys on the road and then just singing with them during the day? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> you know, remember, this is, a fam- this is a family show. Okay. Sweaty feet. <laughs> you don't have to smell her yeah. old sweaty feet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We, <laughs> people have a shower, take a shower every day before they come in. So that's good. Yeah. We're, we're not all, we're not all sleeping in the same area. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. everybody kind of, everybody kind of does their own thing at work. Uh, we, uh, you know, Arthur is always reading on his iPad or on, uh, watching shows on Netflix and Jerry's kind of, uh, playing his games and, Dennis is out sitting on the park talking to folks and uh you know we we just kind of all do our own thing and it's 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 really quiet it's really odd the the difference in at Dollywood compared to us on the road cuz we get on the bus we're all together and we're laughing goofing off and having a good time and it's just I don't know is that is that a good way to explain it Arthur <laughs> Yeah it kind of you know uh, you know when you're on the road you're you're kind of all cooped up together you don't you know unless you stop yeah. or unless we go to a mall or something like that we're kind of you know, you're, you're kind of trapped, uh, uh, together. Right. So you kind of, you kind of end up doing a lot of stuff yes. with the park, you know, everybody kind of scatters and they kind of do their own. We, we have a lot of time between shows. We have like an hour between yeah. shows. And, yeah. uh, oh, you know, we, 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 we'd, we, we'd rather, we'd rather do five or six shows back to back than, than <laughs> wait and do two or three shows yeah, and just sit have there. an hour in between. Yeah. And just sit there. And, and do we got listeners that comment and tell Arthur he only works two days a week because every time they go to Dollywood, y'all are not there. I mean, we've had them say that to us. <laughs> Have we not, Arthur? Well, they need to check our schedule more often. <laughs> <laughs> and if you wasn't playing gospel, if you wasn't playing gospel music, what would you be playing? Oh my goodness! And I uh, ask every musician I, this, okay? Well, now, now, oh. now, Andy went. He went to University of Tennessee. And 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 of course he you know went on a music scholarship, but but he took broadcast journalism. Wow. And, and that's yeah. I'm, he was, yeah. I'm sorry. We make <laughs> broadcast journalists make almost as much money as gospel music artists. You realize that, don't you, Andy? <laughs> almost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted to be a a, a, a sports broadcaster. Okay. Um, that that was just something that, of course, I always wanted to be in gospel music and play gospel music, but I had a love for uh, sports broadcasting. Uh, Tennessee, University of Tennessee had an announcer, who, uh, John Ward, uh, who's a legend in, in the broadcast world, and yeah. I, I just loved listening to him call Tennessee games, and I wanted to do that and be him. And when I was a kid, I would, I would uh, turn down the – TV and try to mimic John Ward and try to be an announcer. So I, you know, I thought maybe I want to do this and, but no, Lord had other plans for me and that's fine. <laughs> What's your favorite sport? I'm in the right spot, but favorite sport? Yeah. Oh gosh. It, it, it has to be football. Uh, college basketball is a close second. Um, as far as playing, I, I, I play golf cause I'm not athletic. You don't have to be athletic to play golf. You heard that, didn't you? <laughs> Did. Say <laughs> that one more time again for Arthur, please. <laughs> Thank the Lord, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but so so Tennessee's your favorite team, I'm assuming. Okay. Uh huh. Do you realize and I got a Tennessee fan that's a good friend of mine named Scott Helton. I reminded him two Saturdays ago, it was the one year anniversary of Georgia State beating Tennessee. In Neyland Stadium, do you remember that game? Yes, I do remember that game. I appreciate you bringing it up. I thought you would. 
Ah, está ótimo. <risos> But no, no, we're, we're, just, with every, we're, we're just sad that we're not going to get to play Alabama this year because because if, if we were ever going to beat them, this would have been the year. <laughs> you think? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> as crazy as 2020 has been, this would have been the year. That's funny. Absolutely. So we'll probably not even end up finishing the season. So, so Andy, what all I, you, you you went on a music scholarship, but you made you majored in broadcast journalism and did music too in high school. I mean, in college, what did you play? I mean, what was the music scholarship for? Was it for piano? Was it for a band instrument? I mean, was it for voice? What was it when you went to Tennessee? I I played uh, percussion. I played on the drum line in the Pride of the Southland Marching Band. Nice. So I got a little bit of scholarship money for that, and I majored in uh, jazz piano performance before I switched over to uh, broadcast journalism. And I realized very quickly that, well, if you're going to major in, in, in any kind of music at, at Tennessee or most universities, it's either going to be jazz or classical. They have no Southern gospel right. programs. So jazz was the closest thing to what I kind of do because I play by ear primarily. And it just, I, it just wasn't for me, and I did that for a year, and and I left school and I I started playing with the local group out of Knoxville, and I decided to go back to school and try the journalism thing, and then that's when the job with the stamps came open. So I I never I never graduated. Uh, I I got two years in, and then the job with the stamps came open in 2006. And I thought, uh, you know, I'm done with this school stuff. I, I'm ready to go play. Oh, and you're going to play. And do I mean, what I'm yeah. supposed to do. And if you're, you're, in a, you're an Elvis fan, well, man, uh, you're playing fun places. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're playing fun places and you got enough church to keep your grandmom and your mama happy. What what better job? I can't think of a better job for a young that's man. Right. Can you, Arthur? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. we, we, that's we were right. playing in a casino one night and at the First Baptist Church the next morning. Okay. <laughs> Arthur, I'm going to ask this question, okay? And you don't have to comment because you are the president of Southern Gospel Music Association, and I'm the only gospel music fan in America that would answer, would ask this question, okay? Uh-huh. We got a deal here, Arthur, that uh-huh. I can okay. that I can ask this. It's nothing yeah. bad. Andy, you can yeah. answer this, okay? If okay. I was to put together, and I'm not going to do this, but I'm just saying, if I was to put together a Southern gospel concert in Biloxi or in Cherokee, North Carolina or Biloxi, Mississippi, would fans leave the casino floor and go in there and listen to gospel music for an hour, hour and a half? What are your thoughts? Oh, yeah, Probably. absolutely. I bet they would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't a doubt in my mind. Probably yeah. no. pro- probably be a better crowd than they are in national uh National events. Well, well, you know, we used to do the cruise. You know, when we first started doing the cruises, yeah, uh, back in the back in the early eighties, we we they wouldn't shut the casinos down. Yeah, uh, now you know now they they close the casinos, but they at the, at first when we first started uh, because we couldn't get the whole ship right, uh, they wouldn't close the, close the casinos down. So so. That's exactly what they do. <laughs> they come on the cruise, go to casinos, and then when the concerts is on, they come out of the casinos and go to the concert. <laughs> That's hilarious. See, I think it would work. And, you know, we're going to get some hard shell independence cut us off for me asking that question. But, you know, I just, I've always, I've always thought them same little ladies playing them one armed bandits love J.D. Sumner and the Stamps. They love the King Demers. They love Gold City. And guess what? J.D. loved them. Ed loved them, did he not? I mean, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And and that's kind of similar to what the situation we're in now at Dollywood because we're outside at the Valley Theater. We're not we're not indoors this year. Yeah. And so uh, it's opened our music up to a lot of people that wouldn't even step foot in our theater. And and I see people, uh, y- young people especially that'll stop and listen. They may listen to a song or two or three songs, but they're very intrigued by it and they, and they love, they look like they really enjoy it. So it's kind of that same, it's kind of the same type of thing as playing in a 
in a secular venue. Yeah. Um, it, it really o- opens you up to a whole nother audience that would never otherwise uh, step foot in a church or anywhere to see you. Yeah. So. Yeah. How many, Arthur, how many thousands of people come through Dollywood every day? A, a bunch. A bunch. Mm-hmm. I say, I think, I think, uh, I think last year the Great Smoky Mountains had three million people come through the Smoky Mountains, and so <clears throat> you can kind of figure how many people come to Dollywood. There's be several, several thousand nice uh, people, you know, and, and and that's you know with our with our programs, you know, when, we, when we're doing two or three programs a day and our theaters seat a thousand, you know, you you can add that up very quickly, you know, how many people come, you know, it's not full every show, but you averaged it out over the year you know there's a lot of people a lot of people you know andy last week we had mark trammell hall of famer on here mm-hmm. and he talked about mm-hmm. leaving one great group going to another and uh it wasn't just about money it wasn't just about the fame i mean lord how mercy he left the cathedrals to go to greater vision when greater vision was was just a speck in the road so to speak you know you're you're leaving you're leaving the stamps a legendary group in its own right i mean let's face it and and arthur i mean no disrespect to the kingdom heirs but at one point sure. the stamps were a bigger name in in not only this industry but outside of this industry you could mention the stamps to, to a country music fan and they would recognize the stamps but Andy, yeah. Andy, yeah. You're, you're leaving. I mean, other than just being at home, I mean, what was the Lord telling you about this at that point? Man, that's that's a good question. Um, it just it it felt like it it was time for for a change, and it. Um, I got. I got to be careful what I'll say about this, <laughs> without going into too much detail. Yeah. Um, we'll but, call uh, Ed. Any can check up on you. I'm teasing, but anyway. Oh yeah, I, I love Ed. <laughs> Ed. Ed was so good to me, and and that that was one of the hardest parts of the whole deal was having to to call him and 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 tell him that I was I was making this move. But uh, I just you know like I said earlier, I, I I just could not for the life of me understand why this job stayed. Uh, vacant for so long it just it made no it blew my mind it made no sense to me and I thought you know what maybe this job is staying open for me maybe th- maybe there's a reason this job is staying open and 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 coming with the kingdom heirs has opened so many other doors for me um uh, spiritually and uh you know so many friendships I met my wife whom I probably wouldn't have have met had I not come with the kingdom heirs and it just it it all worked together. Wow! It, it it all it all just came together, and uh, you know. And you can ask Arthur. I didn't lack any confidence when I joined the group, did I, Arthur? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. And and I, you know, I, I was humbled quite a bit in, in a lot of ways. And, and I wasn't near as good as I thought I was. I, I'll just tell you that I was not near as good as I thought I was. And Arthur reminded me of that several times when I first joined the group. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> well, you know, Arthur play, Ar- Arthur Arthur lived arguably with one of the greatest of all time at Anthony Berger. I mean, did you oh, think oh, did, yeah. did, just yeah. being being confident and cocky? I mean, heck, there's times I think I know more than anybody. Okay, and I think you know, heck, I can do this, I can do that. And my producer Amy's looking over here at me, staring, saying, "Yes, yes, 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 yes." But I mean, when when you say he puts you in your place. You know, I put Arthur on the spot a while ago asking a question, you know, give me a funny Andy story, and he gave me one. Andy, tell us about Arthur putting you in your place sometimes. And and I don't say this, <laughs> I don't say this to 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 make something bad for Arthur or Andy. I'm saying this for the listener out here who's listening who needs it right now because we can all learn from other people. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yo, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, th- things always came 
especially playing the piano musically, things came easy to me, and I, I really didn't have to work very hard for it. And I, I became complacent, especially at that point in my career. Cause I thought I was 20, I just turned 22 years old, and I was on top of the world. Man, I'm with the King of Mares now. I, I mean, there's this is it. I, I've reached it. There's nothing. There's nowhere for me to go. I can't grow anymore, you know, in my playing or anything like that. And uh, boy, I, let's see. We were uh, the King of Mares just did a record before I joined them called the uh, Off the Record. Actually, it was a tribute to the Statesman. And it's one of the coolest Southern gospel albums I've ever heard. And and I heard it before I joined the King of Mares. And we did a song off that album called Hide Thou Me. And that's a song I had played for years, and I had played it a certain way. And we started playing it, and Arthur said, well, won't you won't you listen to how Stan Whitmire plays it? And I thought, well, my goodness, Stan Whitmire, I can't play like him. <laughs> and uh, and we kept doing it, and I played it my way the next day, and Arthur said, did you listen to the way Stan played it? I said, no. And uh, he, he kept getting on to me about that, and finally I said, you know what? I'm going to go home and sit down and I'm going to try to, uh, to, to make this better. Cause I knew it could be better. Now, Arthur didn't necessarily want me to play like Stan or play like any particular person. He just knew I could be better. And he, he pushed me to be better cause he saw it in me. Yeah. So that, that was just, that was something I needed to learn. I, you know, I needed to, I needed humbling and I needed to, uh, to buckle down and, and try to get better. Because there, there's always room to grow. We're, I don't think we're ever done learning. You're right. Uh -huh. Arthur, that's yeah. the Hamill influence in you, ain't it? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and I think everybody goes through. I did, you know, I, I went through the same thing when I was, when I went with the Kingsman. Uh, you know, I, <clears throat> like I said, you, 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 you reach this point that, that's the dream job for you. And you think, well, I, you know, I, I, I've arrived. And you you kind of settle, you know, in into it, and then you realize when you get a little bit older, you know what I I, I was near ready for for where I was at, you know, and and you do yeah. you you have to grow every every day you have to grow. Yeah, and, uh, that's that's the cool thing about our job is being you know a lot of groups you know when they go out on the weekend you know they may sing three or four times in a weekend. You know, the thing with us, we, we do a program. If there's something we didn't like, we could fix it on the next program. We don't have to wait another day. You know, we, we don't have to wait 24 hours. You know, we're going to fix it in an hour. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it, and we're going to fix it in an hour. So we can learn so much quicker and learn each other so much quicker because we we have that, uh, you know, uh, that short turnaround time between chances to fix it. Because a lot of times – in a 24, you didn't forgot what she's going to do, you know, or how you were going to fix it or what needed to be fixed. And, uh, and so you just keep doing it over and over and over until, and, and, but, but that's the, that's the cool thing about our job is it allows you to grow, uh, um, in whatever, whatever you're doing, it allows you to grow. And I knew that, <clears throat> that Andy had the talent. That's the thing about being at the park is, uh, you know, being on the road and, and you're you're in front of the people that that vote and and like singing news and that sort of thing. Being at the park, we're not around that those people. But uh, I think Andy's as good a piano player as I've ever heard, and as talented as 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 anybody I've ever I've ever heard. And he doesn't get the accolades that that uh, a lot of people. Uh, in our industry get and that's just because he's not in that mix uh, but if we were out there on the road all the time he'd be the next anthony murder they wouldn't be you know well, and I, i'll say that in front of you as much as i'll say behind your back and I, wow. I mean that wow i appreciate that buddy that 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 brings me to my next question andy I mean, think about this right here. We know gospel music's a, a closed fraternity, so to speak. And Arthur men mentioned the votes. I mean, when you joined the King Demers, did this even cross your mind? They had been band of the year for X amount of years in a row, and they still are band of the year. If y'all didn't win the first year you was there, would they have blamed it on you? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I, you know, actually, they, they took the award away for a while because 
I really don't know the reason. I think there weren't a lot of groups started dropping the bands, and there weren't as many bands as there used to be. And they they took the award away from, but they brought it back. So um, it it was uh, you know I had some big shoes to fill. Yeah. With with uh, Jeff Stice and and Adam. Uh, back when they started uh, winning band of the year and it's just it's so cool to play to play with these guys every day and to uh stand behind the four of the greatest vocalists in my opinion in southern gospel music I no mean, doubt what a strong lineup no, my goodness no and doubt just, and, and i take it for granted you I, know but i love listening to them sing I uh I, I don't say this because he's my co-host but i believe it's the best four since a certain group from up in Ohio retired, just being honest with you guys, I mean, it's gets better every year. Who did that? You said you were a fan, and I know we got to we got to speed this thing up and finish up. But you were a fan when you were in high school, no doubt. You were a pianist. We already heard you talk about Anthony Berger. Who's some of the others you looked at and uh, and said, "Man, if I could play like that, I don't ever think I can play like this one." But who's some of the folks you tried to emulate, some of the folks you tried to copy, some of the folks you wanted to be like? Well, it was, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was just Anthony for the longest time. Um, but as my, as I got older, my, my musical taste started changing and man, I really, really started liking old classic country music. Yeah. And, uh, and then, and, I discovered the Pig Robbins. That's that's was, the name you know, that was one, coming to my one, mind. Yep. What one of the greatest uh, ever as yeah. country piano players. The man had such a great touch and a great style, and I, I really, really got into that and and tried to incorporate some of that in, into uh, to my playing into what I do. And you know, I, there were some jazz players that had an influence, like Oscar Peterson. Mm-hmm. And man, those guys. He had such big, humongous hands, and and he could just, it, he could just play these chords that I can't even, I can't even comprehend, man. And it's just, <laughs> can you I, think I, about? I, I've tried, I, no, I can't even think about. It, it's impossible. And I have small hands for a piano player, I really do. And so, you know, I've tried to incorporate a little bit of that as well into my playing. And I, you know, Anthony's my number one guy, and always will be. But. Uh, you know, the older I've gotten, the more I've I've listened to to different types of music and different players. So I'd, I'd have to put Pig Robbins up there at the top, probably. Yeah, Pig's awesome. He is. He is. He yeah. is awesome. Awesome. When I think about pianists, you know, you you can't help but think, especially gospel music now. You think about uh, Gordon Moat, okay, and how he does mm-hmm. what he does with one of the senses that he has is gone, his eyesight, okay? Yeah. Andy, how do you describe that? How hard would that be? I mean, you you were taught, I mean, you, you didn't just learn the piano. You were given that gift at five years old. You talked about that at the first part of the show, between five and seven. I mean, you didn't know how to read music or theory when you were five years old, Okay. But yet you you yeah. felt the keys and all that. Have you ever thought about somebody like Gordon, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, how they do what they do, never even seeing a piano or what a piano looks like, but yet that feel, that touch, that sense is there? I mean, have you ever thought about that and how they do that? Yeah, and it's got to be, they have such a strong ear um, that's, and and that's kind of how I started. I I didn't know what I was looking at, at on the keyboard. I, I knew what this sounded like, and I picked my way around until I found it. And and I imagine you know that's that's kind of what they do. That they just they hear it and they they move their way around um, with their hands until what they're hearing in their mind comes out of the keyboard. And, and I, I imagine over time, then you, you just kind of develop that muscle memory and, yeah. and know where to go. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they have such a strong ear for it. You know, a lot of, a lot of things, something that a lot of times you look over too on, on players like that. It's, it's, uh, yeah, they have a great ear but they have a great memory. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, 
especially if you read charts or something like that, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to sit there and play and read the chart, but to memorize that chart and mm -hmm. know what, remember what's coming, what's coming up on a song you've never heard before. Uh, that, that's a strong, uh, plus, I mean, just to be able to remember, um, read through it one and, time. And I think, I think there's a, di there's a difference. There's a difference in, reading notes off of a page and actually playing the song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's a, there's a big difference because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, j just like a vocalist, when you guys do something in the studio, you sing it one way, but after you learn the song and it, it, it takes on a whole new level. Because mm -hmm. I've, Arthur, I've heard you say before, man, I wish, I wish we'd have done this lick back when we recorded yeah. this, or I wish we'd have done this or that. So it, it's kind of, there's a difference when, when you learn a song and you play the song or sing the song, you're not reading it. Yeah. yeah. You know, Arthur, um, there's so many people around here that's a generation older than I am that went to Canton up the road and they took voice lessons from Leroy Abernathy. And they used to tell me, they'd say, we'd go sing the song. And he wasn't happy unless we sang the song note for note for note when we were learning the song. Okay. But when we performed the song, it wasn't that we were not doing it note for note for note. It was that we knew the song so well, we knew how to move yep. with the audience and with the song. You follow what I'm saying? And he was yep. always happy at that point. But when it came to learning the song, he was very litigious in making sure you did it note for note for note for note. So uh, yep. it's, it's good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Arthur, what you got yeah. as we close out? Buddy, I, uh, I thank you for being on. Appreciate you. Uh, uh, I love you. And uh, you uh, uh, make me a better singer. And uh, you you just uh, very talented. I'll say it in front of your face and behind you. Uh, back. I just uh, am, am proud of you and what, uh, how the Lord is. Not just you playing, just how the Lord has grown you over the years. I've watched you, and uh, it's been a blessing to me to watch you grow in the Lord and to watch your family grow. And uh, now you got this new youngin, and uh, you'll yeah. be teaching him some some great things. And and uh, I'm excited for you future. And, and uh, well, thank you, buddy. I, I appreciate that. And let, let me say one more quick little story about Arthur before we go. Um, yeah, please. When I introduced, when I started, when I started dating uh, my wife, Rachel, uh, I introduced her to Arthur. We weren't fully, uh, we weren't steady at this point. Uh, we, you know, we were just kind of talking. And, uh, you know, uh, I ain't I heard that word. I ain't heard that word in 15 years. Arthur, how long steady. has it been since you were steady? <laughs> Steady. Man, I'm, a, I'm an old soul, man. I'm an old I soul. Mean, I mean, I, I, I I'm 51. I, and ago. I'm 51. I ain't heard that word in 30 years. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah. when I introduced Rachel to Arthur, before we even started dating, he said, you need to marry that girl. <laughs> and I did. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, he picked yeah. a good one. He's making good He picked a good one. He picked good. Anything else, Andy? I ain't asking anything you want to throw out there. Now's your chance, my friend. No, I think that's it, buddy. I just uh, I appreciate y'all having me on, and uh, of course, you know, I, I had to follow Mark Trammell last week. So I, I people are going to be so disappointed listening this week compared to last week because <laughs> that was such that was such an incredible episode. I've never been on a a, a podcast before, and I and I'm glad this is the first one. Well, but we appreciate you being a guest. And before we close out, I'm going to ask you one more question just to kind of stir a little bit up there in Sevierville, Tennessee, okay? Can I do that? Arthur, okay. is that okay? Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Okay. Tell us something bad about Jerry Turner before we leave. I'm teasing. That's... <laughs> I'm kidding. Jerry's your buddy. He's a tenor singer, guys. He does a great job. I was just picking at him. So if we really want to know something bad, we talk about Jeff. We know that. Ain't that right, Arthur? Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Kingdom Air's greatest group in gospel music right now, folks. I don't say that uh, being mean. I don't say that being uh, uh, pompous. I don't say that being arrogant. I say that because it is the absolute truth, and it's been a blessing to have their pianist Andy on with us today. Andy, thanks once again, my friend, and uh, thanks for joining us and having a little fun. All righty? 
Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All righty. Thanks, Bill. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Andy Stringfield on SGNP. Arthur, we'll close it out. Let's take a break. We'll be right back on SGNP. Here's important new information from the Diabetes Solution Center for you, a family member, or a loved one suffering with diabetes. If you have lost your provider or if you need a provider for diabetic supplies, you may qualify to receive your diabetic testing supplies now with little or no out-of-pocket cost, regardless of your age. All you need is Medicare or private insurance to be potentially eligible. Call the Diabetes Solution Center right now for details. Just takes a couple of minutes. Our friendly, knowledgeable agents will give you free, no obligation information, handle all the insurance paperwork, and make sure your supplies are delivered directly to your door for free. Call U.S. Medical Supply 24 hours a day. 800-590-1164. 800-590-1164. 800-590-1164. Call right now. 800-590-1164. And what caused this awesome change? Well, I've told him about Jesus and how he had set me free. And how I'm not the lonely, broken man I used to be. I found a new beginning where there should have been an end. I found favor and forgiveness and an everlasting friend. He gave me love. tell you more we sat and talked for hours about the mercies of the lord he said i have been searching and this sounds like what i need but do you think he could ever love a sinner bad as me i said friend you are no different but his love makes all things new and if he can do all this for me he'll do the same for you Something I can feel And that's how I know that my God is real Thank you Lord for saving my soul Thank you Lord for making me whole Thank you Lord I'm feeling so blessed With joy in my heart and a spring in my step Faith gave me something I can feel And that's how I know that my God is real That's how I know that my God is real Yeah, that's how I know that my God is real Me and Arthur, I like Andy I really do he just, He's a great kid. He really is. Hum, humble young guy, man. Humble young guy. He is. He is. He really is. And, and he, he's a, I, I meant that a while ago. I, I, I have loved watching him grow over the years and mature into just a fine young man. I mean, he was a great kid before, but, boy, he just, he just uh, uh, 
uh, got good folks, and and uh, he just matured into just a just a wonderful young man. You know what I like about people like him is, and this is you can tell by talking to him, he don't walk around with a religion on his sleeve. He walks around with Jesus on his heart. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And you can just tell that in his comments. You can tell that in his conversation. You can tell that in his in his life and when he tells his story and this, that, and another. Because he could very easily have said when I asked him the question, how did it feel to be a five- and seven-year-old kid up playing the piano and everybody in church is watching him? Because you know as well as I know in these little pig trails churches that we grew up in, okay, in these small buildings we grew up in, when a kid jumps up there five to seven years old, we're looking for him to put the nickel in the church box as they go by between Sunday school and church. You know what I'm talking about? But yeah. this kid's yeah. up there five to seven years old, and he's getting all the attention, and it'd be very easily for him to get in himself and say and answer the question like, well, it felt pretty good, Darren. Everybody was paying attention to me. All the girls were watching me, and blah, 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 blah. You know, he just yeah. didn't realize it. He just – yeah, and – uh Man, and then to take that talent and just continue using it for the Lord all these days. And, uh, I mean, he could have went a lot of different directions, but I'm glad you guys brought him to the Kingdom Heirs. So, uh, uh, I am too. Good I job. Too. Hey, man, we talked about a picture that the Kingsman took <laughs> years and years ago. Where, And if you hadn't seen the picture, folks, I'm going to post it on SGNP this Friday. But uh, it's the Kingsman, and you guys are standing on a bridge – and you and Ray Dean Reese are not under the bridge, but you actually that picture. Actually, that that's an old picture. That's actually Johnny Parrick. Okay. And Ray Dean. Ray Dean. That ain't you. I thought that's that was you. Picture. No, that no, no. That's that's not me. That's Johnny Parrick. Was though? Was you but in I that did. picture? I wasn't in that picture. No, that was from probably seventy five. Well, now I'm going to have to post two pictures because you were thinking one picture and I was thinking another picture. I was. I was. What picture was, was you thinking? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell about my picture in a minute, but what picture was you thinking? Well, I, you know, I, we've talked about, the, you know, how much I love social media, me, uh, social media and stuff. Yeah. And, of course, I, you know, I've got a Facebook and Twitter and all this kind of I'm not on there very often. Well, somebody hacked my Twitter account. Yeah. <laughs> the other day, and they locked me out of it. They changed <laughs> everything about lock me out of it, which means which means I'll probably have to create another one, which is I don't care. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but but they changed my name to Fantino. 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 It is my Twitter account. It's got my picture and it, and everything. All my tweets on it. And they changed my name to Fantino. So that picture is going around because I posted it because I wanted people to, to go in there and and report it. Yeah. So I can maybe I can get it back, but I doubt Twitter's a little bit different. So I doubt they're serious if I'll ever get it back. Uh, because she's changed everything about her. It's changed all my contact information. So I probably will never get it back. But anyways, I posted that picture of, of, of he changes. So everybody's calling me Fantino. So, so I, I you, thought that was what you were talking about. No, so 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 now you've told me something I can call you. So I can say, let's get Fantino on the line. The great Fantino, yes. <laughs> yes. Amy's sitting here looking at your yep. Twitter picture right now. Our producer's sitting here looking at it, and she's over there dying laughing on the other side of the screen from yep. me. So, That's it. The great fan team. And you know what? I, I told people to go in there and, and block it and, and report it. But you know what? Now I'm changing my mind. I think people need to go in there and just tell them about Jesus. Just yeah. go in there and post. Just post stuff <laughs> about just Bible verses. Just tell them about Jesus. See if we get him saved. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least they called you Fantino. They could have made you Joel Osteen or something like that. And that would have really something, caused confusion yeah. in the gospel yeah. music world. Yeah. Who who knows? But <laughs> So that's been a, that's been a laugh. That's been a laugh. That is, that is <laughs> kind of funny. Well, the picture I was talking about was a Kingsman standing on a yeah. bridge somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they yeah. they were as and, and maybe we'll get Jeff Turner next week to come on and talk about this some. But as they were sitting on the picture, there was there was two Chriso, um 
telephone poles. It, it, it was an it was an album cover. I can't remember the I can't remember the album now. Um, and and it was the, the the you know the guys were on top of the bridge, and then Ray and Johnny Perrick were down on, under the under kind of under the bridge, standing on a Chris Oak telephone pole, which was the truss for the bridge. Yeah. And so somebody had commented about about, about uh, uh, Jason Singleton had commented on there about about I, I just want to know how they uh, uh, much less than made up maybe falling to their death. Yeah. <laughs> from those posts, how did they get off of there without getting chrysoed all over their suit? Yeah. And I said, well, and, and I posted under and I said, well, if you'll notice. The lead singer and the baritone singer is standing on top of the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. How did they get on fair without that Chris Ho getting on? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You'll have to ask Ray Dean about it. <laughs> we need to get Ray Dean back on. We do. We we do. We do. Well, man, this has been fun. I appreciate you lining lining Andy up for us. That was a good interview. Yeah, buddy. Good, good stuff. It was fun. Good stuff. Yeah. Folks, you want to know anything about us, check us out on the web, www.southerngospelnews.com. www.southerngospelnews.com. When I say southerngospelnews.com, Southern Gospel News Podcast, SGNP. i got to remember that. Sometimes I say Southern Gospel News and I send them to, uh, what's his name, site. He thanks me for it, I guess. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> You've been, you're doing too many podcasts right now. Shoot, too too many is the word. Hey man, real quick before we get out of here, how's COVID treating yeah. our gospel groups and all that? What are you hearing from the road? I know we're getting some concerts well, start backing up, and uh, you know what's going on. Start starting back. We we we're starting the uh, harvest festival uh, this year. Um, we start this week. Uh, this coming weekend, we start. Um, back up with having the different groups and things. It's a little bit different because it's all outside stages uh, right. for the month of October. And uh, so, but, uh, you know, they've got a good selection of groups and, and uh, uh, it, you know, it's kind of opening, things are kind of opening up a little bit. And so hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, before long, I think uh, uh, the governor uh, will make a, another um uh, maybe release some of the restrictions a little bit and uh, allow us to have a few more people at the park. And um, But things are starting to open up a little bit, and we're glad to see that. Glad to see it. Cool. Hey, I'm going to tell you, before we get out of here, I'm going to leave you with a joke. Can I do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we got a lot of gospel music fans up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and up in Amish country, do we not? Yep. How come the Amish don't catch COVID, Arthur? Hmm. Um, I don't know. They don't watch TV. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. There's a lot of truth in that right there, brother. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> hey, sure. what's, what, what's wrong with living right anyway? Not a thing. Not, Not a thing. thing. We thank you, my friend. We'll let, talk to you next week on SGNP. All right. SGNP is excited you chose to listen today. If you'd kindly leave a remark and rating in the podcast remarks section, we surely would appreciate it. Please share with a friend or family member. Look for us on Facebook, Twitter, and our new website, southerngospelnewspodcast.com. Are you paying too much for term life insurance? There's a tremendous price war among the major term life companies. Rates have dropped dramatically in the past few years. For example, a man age 45 non-tobacco user. $1 million of coverage is only $75 per month, level for the next 10 years. Or a man age 50 non-tobacco user can buy a half million dollars of coverage for a monthly premium of only $110 dollars guaranteed not to change for the next 20 years that's right level rates for 20 years and if you're a smoker we have great rates for you as well at the term lifeline we specialize in policies of a half million dollars and above so if you're looking for new or replacement term life insurance call right now for a free quote rates and availability may vary by state sample rate quotes are based on preferred non tobacco underwriting exam required to qualify 800-803-2142 800-803-2142. That's 800-803-2142.